Hello, this is Kenya Podcast Preacher, and I want to welcome you back to Deep Waters. This podcast is brought to you by Applied Strengths Ministry, where we believe working together in our strengths is the effect of working out the will and calling of God in our lives. This message started out as a seven-part series. This, however, makes it difficult for those who want to take the whole bite all at once. So what I did was separate out one topic from another to create several different messages. They will each be titled differently. Well, I can. Well, my max time frame for podcast messages is one hour. And this is not due to the podcast limitations, but due to converting it to a video file and then sharing it on the YouTube channel. No doubt I will be able to go longer shortly as YouTube is now entering into the podcast space. The title of this message is, Did We Fall Out of Our Cribs in Heaven? Have you ever heard the saying that the apple doesn't fall far from the tree? Unfortunately, in this world of serious negativity and judgment, we often hear it applied to someone who acts or makes the same mistakes as their wayward parent. Now this is not a message for the weak, religious, or those that can spell and have a phobia of newly created words. And yes, you would know if you were one of any of these, because heresy would fly out your lips like a hummingbird to nectar, or maybe like an idiosyncratic fanatic. Nah, probably not that. Now the idea that God himself calls us gods, and yes, this is that, is rather interesting in and of itself, but not because it is so obvious that we are. I mean, don't we have superheroes? And then the rest of us non-superhero types? who depend on them to save us from the bad guys? The idea that our spiritual DNA matches God's is, well, so obvious, right? Unless perhaps you run into a religious nut job. No doubt in this message I may go forward, in time and back in time, interspersedly, meaning this may not flow from A to Z so cleanly, but hop around a bit as I will, as no doubt we will do a few 360s. If you ever got a revelation dumped from God, you will know exactly what I'm talking about. And I will try to avoid saying, no doubt, again. Psalms 82, 6, 7. I said you were gods, and all of you are children of the Most High. But you shall die like men and fall like one of the princes. John 10, 34. Jesus answered them, Is it not written in your law, I said, you are gods? You see how Psalms 82, 6 lays us out in just 12 words? You are gods. All of you are children of the Most High. You see the tree apple story here? Now we see here that Jesus was quoting Psalms 82, 6, 7, and John. You know, just in case we forget what Psalms stated. After all, it is a long journey from the Garden of Eden to the Garden of Gethsemane. So now this shoots us to the beginning of time, right? I mean, we have to know where this identity originated. And some roots remain roots, which is their fruit. But that has nothing to do with our identity or this message. Genesis 1, 26, 27. Then God said, Let us make man in our image, according to our likeness. Let them have dominion over the fish of the sea, over the birds of the air, over the cattle, over all the earth, and over every creepy thing that creeps on the earth. So God created man in his own image. In the image of God, he created him. Male and female, he created them. Would you put this power and authority in the hands of men, not connected to the one who created it? No, but yes, he did. Well, we did, but then he took it back. But not to preserve, but to end, so that something new would emerge. Something old and corrupted would be cast away forever. Not the primer of the story, but I will show you how to untie a verbal knot. Genesis two sixteen seventeen, And the Lord God commanded the man, saying, Of every tree of the garden you may eat freely. But of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, you shall not eat. For in the day that you eat of it, you shall surely die. Basically it's saying, follow the rules or else. Genesis 3, 6 So when the woman saw that the tree was good for food, that it was pleasant to the eyes, and a tree desirable to make one wise, she took of its fruit and ate. She also gave to her husband with her, and he ate. Don't follow the rules. Luke 4, 4, 6. And the devil said to him, All this authority I will give to you, and their glory, for this has been delivered to me, and I give it to whomever I wish. Yep, we gave it away. That is, we gave away the dominion of it all. 
sin has a price, and none of us cared until we received the revelation of the greater penalty of that price, which you know by now is eternal separation from the image maker, that is, God. 1 John 5.19 We know that we are of God, and the whole world lies under the sway of the wicked one. The penalty of surrendering our godhood, our responsibility for the planet, is high. Sin didn't just place the planet and all of nature under a curse. It has been destroying it, is destroying it, and in a short time will completely destroy it. No amount of human intervention, such as money laws, cabogenery, will change the outcome. It is possible that we will destroy this planet in possibly less time than it took God to create it. It's just my opinion. Okay, so things look hopeless as we sway to and fro like a singing frog. And no, I didn't ignore the fact that John up there just stated that we are of God in his saying. I just figured that by now you might be inclined to believe that we are gods. Believing and hearing by his own declaration that we are in, of, and imaged, and likenessed to God. John 12:31. Now is the judgment of this world. Now the ruler of this world will be cast out. Done. But note he said the ruler of this world. You think God is running the show? Nope, he is and he is not, and doing so intentionally. Stop, Ken, with this back and forth. It's just got to stop. No, but I'll explain. Salvation only means something if we know that we are coming out of a thing that will end, but not end. After this earth is destroyed, our choices on this earth, that is our predisposition, sets us on a course to heaven or hell. We were all born to go right into the demon Huskow once on the other side of this life. So but when I say our predisposition, I'm talking about those of us who are from God, that is, have the seed of God in us, who are called by his marvelous light. See 1 Peter 2.9, 1 Corinthians 1.9, God is faithful, by whom you were called into fellowship of his Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. 1 Peter 5.10, but may the God of all grace, who called us to his eternal glory by Christ Jesus, after you have suffered a while, Perfect, establish, strengthen, and settle you. Second Peter 1 3. As his divine power has given to us all things that pertain to life and godliness, through the knowledge of him who called us by the glory and virtue. Godliness, you see it? Peter felt like he needed to repeat this fact, and no, it wasn't his twin. When a preacher is preaching and we Christians are called to preach the gospel, are you hanging up on God? No worries, and you'd better worry. But, however, he is more annoying than a telemarketer on the weekends. He will leave the 99 to go after the stray cat. Matthew 18:12. For some mythical population, we say that cats have nine lives. Don't believe it. They have one just like you and I. Second chances only exist on earth. Not in the sheep and goat lines of heaven. Matthew 25, 31, 46. Pick up the call before the bill collector comes a-calling. Yes, until you become authentically born again. You owe the debt of your own sin. And you will have to either pay the debt yourself or answer the call to allow Jesus' death and resurrection to have paid that debt for you. Your friends won't pay it, even if they could. The devil can't pay it either. The demon whose cow was created for him and the fallen angels, not for humanity. I want you to be prepared to go into uncharted waters here this is going to drop into things that many of us either did not want to know or dismiss because it was not helpful to win unbelievers. Well, this ministry is not for the unbeliever. We are equipping the saints for the work of ministry and making disciples at last so that you can win others whereby they can do the same thing. It's in my lane to speak directly to Christians. This does not mean that we do not care for the unbeliever. In fact, the opposite is more accurate in that, because we care so much for the lost and wandering children of God, who have yet to be plugged in, we have decided to hit the nail on the head. I'm sorry, but sometimes I'll hit your toes. Over the last 30 years, I have seen and read about a great number of converts being won to the Lord, and the question that always accompanies the harvest is what happens to all of the fish. Now I have been in churches that were running for God and still miss this one thing. I know you want to know what it is, and so you understand how transparent we are being, I will show you the heart of the ministry. This may be hard to hear, but that doesn't mean we shouldn't say it or hear it. 
we are so concerned for the horrible results of abortions, and yet it is because we are not adequately equipping the saints for the work of ministry. Out of our laziness, ignorance, operating from a religious spirit, or our five other senses, that is, taste, see, touch, smell, or hearing, and not revelational knowledge and unadulterated faith, we are aborting new converts at a rate, in all likelihood, greater than the rate of natural children. I told you this was going to be hard. I will give you one example out of the thousands upon thousands that exist, and then move on. Now a guy like Reinhard Bonnke could catch a harvest of a million fish. A million baby Christians. Each baby Christian should have a spiritual home whereby they are equipped for the work of ministry and a spiritual parent so that they can make them a disciple, so that they can grow from the milk-bred meat of the word and grow from a baby to a young man or woman to a father or mother. The result of being in this kind of spiritual family is that they will be released into ministry where they can use their natural talents, personality, spiritual gifts, and operate in a five-fold ministry if called to do so. Christian peeps, this represents just one crusade out of thousands upon thousands that have happened over this planet. Is this system of development in place? We appear to be practicing the practice of catch and release more than catch and develop. I will finish with my short rant with this. I say this next thing because we are still doing church the old way. And that is that we have aborted more baby Christians without concern than the nations have aborted natural children. No, I cannot statistically support what I just said, but in being in the modern church for almost 30 years, and being a part of a hard-running, winning souls at all cost church, and seeing that it still failed due to a lack of nothing less than equipping the saints for the work of ministry, and making disciples at last, that remain, that are spiritually mature, that can fight and will fight the spiritual fight. I don't see that I'm off on my assumptions. Since 2020, we have seen the church go from a plum to a prune. Hey, at least I didn't say a raisin. The saints were not prepared for the events that God himself allowed and used to get our attention. In the message series, Church Purpose, I go into how we solve the current church crisis, the shallow saint crisis, the immature saint crisis, the self-centered lack of love saint crisis, and a lack of serving saint crisis. You see, God never corrects without giving us some instruction on how to self-correct or bring someone into our life to help us change our course. So earlier I chatted about God calling us gods, before I went into a church effectiveness preaching rant. I think it is a good idea to find out what our brother looks like. I mean, our Lord and Savior. Well, but he is also our brother. No, Jerry Springer, this is not an episode for you. Scripture Power Luke 9, 29 And as he prayed, the appearance of his face was altered, and his robe became white and glistening. Matthew 17, 2. And he was transfigured before them. His face shone like the sun, and his clothes became as white as the light. Mark 9, 3. His clothes became shiny, exceedingly white, like snow, such as no launderer on earth can whiten them. Revelation 14, 15. His head and hair were white like wool, as white as snow, and his eyes like a flame of fire. His feet were like fine brass, as if refined in a furnace, and his voice as the sound of many waters. Daniel 7, 9, 10. I watched till thrones were put in place, and the Ancient of Days was seated. His garment was as white as snow, and the hair of his head was like pure wool. His throne was a fiery flame, its wheels a burning fire. A fiery steam issued and came forth from before him. A thousand thousands ministered to him. Ten thousand times ten thousand stood before him. The court was seated and the books were open. And I don't know about you, but even Judge Judy would be nervous. That's going to be a serious day right there. The books were open. All of our spiritual resumes will be in it. Daniel 7, 13, 14. I was watching in the night visions and behold, one like the Son of Man, coming with the clouds of heaven. He came to the Ancient of Days, and they brought him near before him. Then to him was given dominion and glory and a kingdom, that all peoples, nations, and languages should serve him. 
His dominion is an everlasting dominion, which shall not pass away, and his kingdom is the one which shall not be destroyed. Daniel 7.18 But the saints of the Most High shall receive the kingdom, and possess the kingdom forever, even forever and ever. Daniel 7.22 Until the Ancient of Days came, and a judgment was made in favor of the saints of the Most High, and the time came for the saints to possess the kingdom. Daniel 7.27 Then the kingdom and dominion, and the greatness of the kingdoms under the whole heaven, shall be given to the people, the saints of the Most High. His kingdom is an everlasting kingdom, and all dominions shall serve and obey him. Revelations 19.16 And he has on his robe and on his thigh a name written, King of kings and Lord of lords. This should refocus your eyes on him and what our purpose is on earth. We are gods made in the image and likeness of our Father, who then decided the plan would be that he, that is Jesus, or if you can handle the meat of a thing, God himself, will be born in our image and likeness, of which we are of his image and likeness. So to show us the only difference between us is that he created us, and we didn't create him. We came from him, so therefore he is the originator. We are the benefactor. He alone is omnipotent, omniscient, and omnipresent. But wait, there's more, because as you see, that you are like him, while at the same time retaining your own personality, you can do what he did while he was here. If you look like him on the inside and on the outside, then there should be no reason that what came out of him should also come out of you. So, for example, if he raised the dead, ought not you? <laughs> Leave it to you, Ken, to start out with something that might just stretch our faith from L.A. to New York. Yes, but do you not see it? You know that he said that it is good that I go, because when I do, I will give you the same spirit I did all those things that you have no doubt read or will read about. And so, therefore, you can do the same thing. The same thing. I'm telling you the absolute very same things. Let's see the prophetic response from the Father to our sinning and its takeover of the entire world of humanity. Isaiah 7:14. Therefore the Lord himself will give you a sign. Behold, the virgin shall conceive and bear a son, and shall call his name Emmanuel. But who do you think you are? A pre-Nostradamus type? Nope, Nostralitis was wrong. But this guy, that is Isaiah, was absolutely hearing from the father, who was shouting at poor Isaiah, who was no doubt trying to document everything that God was shouting from his mountain, while at the same time, trying to wrap his mind around what he was declaring, while at the same time, jumping up and down at both the sound of the coming salvation and the birth of the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords, the God of Gods. Are you saying that this was stated thousands of years before it happened? And that when it happened, it happened just exactly as it was written? Right. In fact, the whole Bible is like that. So, for example, if we were to say he is going to return to earth to get the mint left on his my pillow in the manger, then it would be absolutely true. Look at Isaiah foretelling the future of an upcoming event. Isaiah 9, 6, 7. For unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given, and the government will be upon his shoulder, and his name will be called Wonderful, Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. Of the increase of his government and peace, there will be no end. Upon the throne of David, and over his kingdom, to order it and establish it with judgment and justice, from that time forward, even forever. The zeal of the Lord of hosts will perform this. Now look, 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 as Luke tells us of the manifestation of that very prophecy Isaiah shared with humanity millions and millions of hours ago, before it ever happened. Luke 1, 26, 38. Now in the sixth month, the angel Gabriel was sent by God to a city of Galilee, named Nazareth, to a virgin betrothed to a man whose name was Joseph, of the house of David. 
The virgin's name was Mary. And having come in, the angel said to her, Rejoice, highly favored one. The Lord is with you. Blessed are you among women. But when she saw him, she was troubled at his saying, and considered what manner of greeting this was. Now, before I go on, wait a minute. She saw an angel, and she wasn't concerned by the fact that, Bink, the angel just appeared to her. She was more concerned about what he was saying. That's interesting, and doesn't it tell you a little bit about how, back in those days, angels were not a mystery like they are today? Verse 30. Then the angel said to her, Do not be afraid, Mary, for you have found favor with God. And behold, you will conceive in your womb, and bring forth a son, and shall call his name Jesus. He will be great, and he will be called the Son of the Highest, and the Lord God will give him the throne of his father David. And he will reign over the house of Jacob forever, and of his kingdom there will be no end. Then Mary said to the angel, How can this be, since I do not know a man? That means she hadn't been intimate yet. And the angel answered and said to her, The Holy Spirit will come upon you, and the power of the highest will overshadow you. Therefore also that Holy One who is to be born will be called the Son of God. Now indeed, Elizabeth, your relative, has also conceived a son in her old age. And this is now the sixth month for her who was called barren. For with God nothing will be impossible. Then Mary said, Behold the maid servant of the Lord. Let it be to me according to your word. And the angel departed from her. Look at her song that she sang, sing, and sung in her response to the prophecy that she, in all likelihood, was not aware of at the time that was in her, that it was the he that Isaiah was talking about. The only thing left out of the prophecy was her name. But we know God is not inclined to show off, right? I mean, think about this moment if you can. Mary was probably aware of the scripture before Gabrielle, the unannounced but then announced, had shown up, and had probably read a scroll or three. And to find out, in that angel encounter of a moment, that it was her Isaiah was referring to. She be the one he's talking about. What was her response? Luke 1, 46, 45. And Mary said, My soul magnifies the Lord, and my spirit has rejoiced in God my Savior, for he has regarded the lowly state of his maidservant. For behold, henceforth all generations will call me blessed. For he who is mighty has done great things for me, and holy is his name. And his mercy is on those who fear him, from generation to generation. He has shown strength with his arm. He has scattered the proud in the imagination of their hearts. He has put down the mighty from their thrones, and exalted the lowly. He has filled the hungry with good things, and the rich he has sent away empty. He has helped the servant Israel in remembrance of his mercy, as he spoke to our fathers, to Abraham, and to his seed forever. You see, we now can believe and see that we are all in the family and that whatever Jesus did in his life, we can also do because we are from the same tree. But instead of us Christians walking in our spiritual destiny as gods, we continue to help perpetuate the fall of mankind by ignoring God's instruction to his church, which is to equip the saints for the work of ministry and make disciples that then make other disciples, and to preach the gospel with and in power, with miracles, signs, and wonders following. So hey, how bad can it be? Well, we had the earth in our grasp, tripped and fell and threw it in the hands of Satan. And then Satan tried to throw it into the hands of Jesus, who threw it back at him like a hot potato and said, I will get it back all right, but not this way and not this one. Colossians 2, 14, 15. As we know, Jesus had to void the contract put in place by our sin first. And our reward for his suffering and sacrifice is that we get to join him on a new heaven and new earth. Isaiah 65, 17. Undefiled by the natural man, Satan, demons and his kids, sin, hell, and death. Revelation 17, 18. And we also get to live, rule, and reign with him for a thousand years on this old rock before it is fully ended and begun at the same time. Revelations 24. But so now, did Isaiah not say a child is born? 
not will be, was, or were, but is born? Mistake? Nope. How, 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 when we see in the kingdom of God, time is stripped away of its limiting structure, and things that were first are last, and last first, or even I suspect all at once. Is he saying that Jesus was already born before we, or they, back in the day saw that he was born? Yep. There's too much revelation here. I must move forward. Let's take a look at the mystery that points to God being right again, which is that we are gods. But more important than that is that we know and grow and behave like it. Now we know that we are created in his image and likeness, and we know that he is actually dwelling inside of us. Read John for that discovery. It's not so hard to understand, you see, because your father and mother are dwelling inside of you, per se, right? They are a part of you in the flesh. So God is a part of you in the spirit. Not so hard or difficult to fathom, right? So once we become authentically born again, our family is redefined. Let's take a look. Matthew 10, 35, 37. For I have come to set a man against his father, a daughter against her mother, and the daughter-in-law against her mother-in-law. And a man's enemies will be those in his own household. He who loves father or mother more than me is not worthy of me. And he who loves son or daughter more than me is not worthy of me. Now before I go to the next scripture, when we're talking about love here, in the context of the Bible, that is serving. So if you're spending more of your time serving your kids, or your wife, or your husband, than you are a God, that's what he's talking about. Luke 12, 51, 53. Do you suppose that I came to give peace on earth? I tell you, not at all, but rather division. Now, before I go on, again, Jesus is telling the Christian, the authentically born-again believer, that they can have peace. So the peace here that he's talking about is he's not talking about, hey, I'm bringing everybody peace. Like, hey, this is for everybody. Nope, this isn't the 60s. And they didn't find peace back then either. Again, the peace that God is talking about is the peace that he gives us after being born again. Verse 52, For from now on, five in one house will be divided, three against two, and two against three. Father will be divided against son, and son against father. Mother against daughter, and daughter against mother. Mother Mother-in-law against her daughter-in-law, and daughter-in-law against her mother-in-law. This is how Jerry Springer got started. He read this scripture and said, Oh boy, look at this, I got a career. <laughs> Mark 13, 12, 13. Now brother will betray brother to death, and a father is child, and children will raise up against parents and cause them to be put to death. And you will be hated by all for my name's sake, but he who endures to the end shall be saved. Do you see what it is to be a god? <laughs> Luke 21, 16, 17. You will be betrayed even by parents and brothers, relatives and friends. They will put some of you to death, and you will be hated by all, for my name's sake. Matthew 10, 21. Now brother will deliver up brother to death, and a father his child, and children will raise up against parents and cause them to be put to death. We've already seen all of this. It's not like it's coming. It's already here. It was here a long time ago. But it is going to get worse, and we can tell. All you have to do is look at the news. Let's go on to Genesis 22, 23. Then the Lord God said, Behold, the man has become like one of us, to know good and evil. And now least he put out his hand and take also of the tree of life and eat and live forever. Therefore the Lord God sent him out of the garden of Eden to till the ground from which he was taken. And didn't he remove the hellish macro chance that we would pile sin upon sin? and then try and also eat from the tree of life, thinking that it would remove the sin we just committed? Yep, you see, it would have only positioned us to live in sin forever. He kindly delivered us from that. But so now don't worry, because just like in the garden, when he had to protect us from ourselves, he has us now, today, giving us chance after chance. No, you don't deserve any. Remember, you were the moving party in the crimes against him and humanity. He was and is the responding party. Ephesians 2, 4, 7. But God, who was rich in mercy, because of his great love with which he loved us, even when we were dead in trespasses, 
made us alive together with Christ. By grace you have been saved. Remember, you have been made a new creation at the point of your salvation. Verse 6, and raised us up together. Notice the past tense in this statement. It has already happened. And made us sit together in the heavenly places in Christ Jesus. Made us sit and in Christ at that, in community, in rest, in his peace and presence. Is this saying that, by the way, I am seated at the right hand of the Father? Colossians 3.1 If then you were raised with Christ, seek those things which are above, where Christ is, sitting at the right hand of God. Okay, so look, and you will now understand this conversation between Mom and Jesus. Matthew 20.21 20, And he said to her, What do you wish? She said to him, Grant that these two sons of mine may sit, one on your right hand and the other on your left, in your kingdom. So how short-sighted was mom to ask such a question of Jesus? <laughs> I know, I know. They hadn't yet the revelation of the totality of what Jesus would be doing in his death and resurrection. This is good stuff, right? I know for me, I want to be in Christ sitting next to Papa and not on either side of him. Besides, do you think God would give up Jesus' seat to one of us? Not unless it was your blood that made the humanity purchase. And even then, probably not. Much love, of course. In another message, I covered the problem with our ears and eyes. So I won't go too deep other than to show you it's a real thing. Mark 4, 11, 12. And he said to them, To you it has been given to know the mystery of the kingdom of God. But to those who are outside, that is, those that are not born again, all things come in parables, so that seeing they may see and not perceive, and hearing they may hear and not understand, lest they should turn and their sins be forgiven them. In one of the foundational scriptures of this message, Psalms 82, 6, he said, I said you are gods, and all of you are children of the Most High. We are singled out kids lost in a pasture of goats. Look, not to go hard again. But you are not of this world. Why are you acting like you belong to a family that is bent on abusing you at every turn? I'm not talking about if they hated me, then they will surely hate you, Scripture. I'm talking about the you part, trying to fit in with the popular kids, the cool group, the beauty lookers. You know you can more than aptly apply a name to the group that you are trying to identify with, such as your family. But time and reality will show you that you belong to his family. Pride, ego, and arrogance make for bad siblings, so don't let them adopt you. John 15, 18, 19. If the world hates you, you know that it hated me before it hated you. If you were of the world, the world would love its own. Yet, because you are not of the world, but I chose you out of the world, therefore the world hates you. Now don't ask why, it wastes time. Well, that's it for this message. Remember, it's not what you find wrong or disagree with regarding the message, but what you can take away from it. Together, we can do more to impact the kingdom than if we work alone. Let's flip the script and kill, still, and destroy the works of the enemy and create space for the light of light to shine through into people's lives. Plant a seed and click on the like and subscribe button. Let's build this ministry together. Thanks, and see you next time in deep waters.